Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. So today I'm going to do a super quick review on this, a battery powered airbrush that I picked up from Amazon. If you watched the channel a couple of months ago, you've seen I did this and I've put a little bit of a video on Hobby Chats to why. So just to recap, the whys is I go through a lot of rattle cans uh, for undercoating, never used an airbrush before, and I was getting a bit concerned about the ecological impact of all the rattle cans I'm doing. The, the propellants in there, the plastic lids, that kind of stuff, and thought, right, let's have a look and try one of these things. So this was fairly cheap. I said I picked it up from Amazon, about 30 quid. I will link it below, and I'll talk about actually why that doesn't really matter uh, in a bit. And when it turned up, obviously the front of the package bears no resemblance to what's inside. Uh, it's a totally different style of airbrush top, which you'll see in a second. You get quite a lot of pieces in here. Now, I said before about it doesn't matter which one you order off Amazon particularly, because I put the links down to this one and said anyone else tried it, what we're doing. And a friend of mine picked uh, one up, or went to pick one up, and it had sold out, this, this exact one. But he skimmed through Amazon, looked for one that looked the same, and there's tons on there that looked the same, ordered it, came in different packaging, but when you look at it, it's got all the same uh, manufacturing marks and things on it, it's probably made in exactly the same factory, and they just package it differently. So, uh, although I'm talking about a specific one, I'm fairly sure it's gonna be generic everywhere, although don't quote me on it. So what do you get in the pack? I think this is the most important bit. This is the battery uh, compressor. You do get a charging lead, but it's plugged in on my hobby desk. Um, charging cable the charging cable goes into a USB uh, onto a USB plug you get a number of the paint holders never use this large one because that's a huge volume of paint uh, this is the one I've used more frequently nice clear see-throughs you can see what you mix in uh, in there you see I've already cleaned it very well either because some death guard green in there and some evidence is a black so again I have only used this for base coating although I did do some death guard green uh, painting and I found actually uh, any paint you can put through an airbrush obviously I'm sure you guys know that if you're listening um, but I did find definitely the base coats that Games Workshop do you need to have a lot of watering down to get them uh, to go through it smoothly which I guess is why they sell separate airbrush paint because it's a bit thinner uh, and goes through easier so you get then the airbrush itself um, and a few little attachments Again, because you could take this uh, at this top and use these attachments to attach it to a hose. Obviously, I didn't do that. You get a little metal cup as well. Um, because it's painted black, I just found it quite awkward to know, one, when it's clean, and two, how well mixed the paint is inside. So I tended to use the plastic one, but we'll attach this one just for reference for today. Um, and again, when you're doing it, the idea is you put your paint in there, you would water it down if it's a, a paint that needs watering down, and that comes with a little bit of experience. And you've got a lid on there, although frequently I was not bothering to use that while spraying, and someone's probably going to tell me that's wrong, and I should. <laughs> but yeah, I've done a lot of base coating with this, I've had it for a couple of months, and it worked really well, I'm really happy with it, but it's now broken. Um, I don't take that as a knock against this device. You've got to strip your airbrush down for cleaning, as I'm sure you all know, and when you dismantle these things for cleaning, um, comes like that and this is where the needle comes out and you can clean the needle and there's a little device that screws onto here that means your little handle works um, and it will make the needle come out and that's where the paint is in here you pull it back the needle exits the hole and it sprays out now unfortunately there's a little device that screws on here i managed to lose um, typically i will clean airbrushes and model stuff and whatever in the utility sink downstairs it's a nice steel sink um, it's not going to damage anything you can scrub it afterwards I was being lazy one particular day, decided I'm gonna clean this in the family bathroom upstairs and lost that piece down the plug hole. Uh, foolish, obviously. Now, I could get it out of the U-bend part. However, that's behind the wall as to where it's been built in, so I've lost it. So, which is why I'm kind of doing this review now because I've changed what I'm doing. And if I'm gonna give a, a review and an opinion on uh, how this has worked, obviously this part I'm not gonna be using anymore, unless anyone knows where I can get that replacement part. So what I've found, um, works really well real consistent uh, good pressure that comes through it from what i've found unless you're using some of the thicker paints it, you use a thicker paint and it. it doesn't seem to have the force to push through any blockages but obviously you should be watering your paints down through an airbrush i believe or using specific air paint and it seems to work so i'll turn it on you can see how quiet it is so not bad at all i can still talk over it and it's probably coming through louder on the recording than it actually is in real life because this you can quite happily have a conversation with someone next to it. It's not obtrusive, uh, fairly quiet. Now, if you do it in use, you can see here, you pull the trigger um, and the paint would then be coming out. I'd love to do a demonstration, but obviously, as I said, not fully functioning. What I will do, though, is I've got a couple of bits of old footage from previous projects where I did record myself using the airbrush, doing some base coats or undercoats, but I didn't put it into the actual videos because I thought no one really wants to see this. So I'll drop some footage now while I'm talking of, of me using this in, in anger, so to speak. And a few times I used it just on my hobby desk here, a bit of plastic to stop um, 
the paint going everywhere and the dust uh, with the windows open and that kind of thing um, balcony doors in this room so um, lots of air coming through i am going to pick up a fume extractor little hood thing because obviously you don't really want to be breathing these things in and i've done that sat using it in a room perfectly fine I've used it in the garden I've used it in the garage various places good pressure uh, good undercoater um, and really a worthwhile tool to have in your arsenal and the little positive thing is this bottom part Again, the friend that I mentioned has airbrushes um, and has got some quite pricey ones and some big pumps and things, but he's actually taken to using this uh, underneath a more, much more expensive airbrush head because quicker to set up, quieter, um, and again, works quite in the hobby room now. Because I've broken this, I've since gone out and picked up another airbrush head. Again, just a cheap one, just a green stuff world. This was 30 quid. And on the packaging of this itself, it does say this is for base coating. It's got quite a wide needle. So this is what I've done. And it comes with a connector to go to a hose, but I've just taken that off. And this screws on and works perfectly well there. Um, and, you know, already I can notice that actually uh, this head is far better in terms of the diameter, how it works, how it lets the paint out than the one that comes with it. But for my purposes, it makes zero difference because this one is fine at laying down base coats and, and uh, undercoating, and so is this one. So in terms of if you're an experienced airbrush uh, user, you probably find this is the bit that would be quite interesting for you, that you've got a kind of portable way of doing it. Now, I've been spraying through flare uh, surface primers for the most part. So in terms of that cost saving I was talking about before, about not using rattle cans, uh, I've nearly paid for itself with this uh, sprayer. Now, obviously I won't because I've lost a part to it, um, but it very nearly after two months has paid for itself because I do a lot of priming. I tend to prime black and then I'll put another color over the top. Now, if you've watched the channel, I am still using rattle cans because I'm using up um, the rattle cans that I've already got. And well, you're not gonna stop using something you've already got, but absolutely is beginning to pay for itself or would have done if I hadn't have broken it. So if that's a reason to get into it, that kind of ecological purpose, uh, definitely a winner from me on that one. And the other paints I've been messing about with a little bit is uh, just some random Vallejo Model Air ones, and I've used some other pieces. But your friend is airbrush thinner that I've been using. Um, I'm not gonna go through how to use this because you guys listening are probably more of an expert than me, but just some useful stuff that you know I've been finding as I've been going. So would I recommend this? Absolutely. Um, what I would not recommend though is losing pieces. So clean it somewhere, you are not going to lose stuff. Uh, keep it clean, keep it maintained, keep this topped up in terms of battery. And this is a brilliant tool to have in your uh, arsenal. Absolutely, really pleased with it. Um, yeah, battery life, I've not had any problems with it. Keep it charged up, it doesn't seem to lose too much pressure. Um, so that's my ramble. Just thought I would share that with you, my experiences in it. I am going to keep airbrushing for base coats, absolutely. Uh, and obviously, it's encouraged me to go and pick another one up, and there's a good chance I'm going to buy a spray booth, and maybe I will be delving much further into this world of airbrush hobbying. Uh, but maybe not, you never know. I might just stick to doing the base coats. All right, I'm going to stop waffling. If you enjoyed that, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, and I'll see you on another video.